The line differential protection requires to share information between two different stations. CPROTEC 5.7SL87 supports the use of conventional instrument transformers in one end, which can be connected to a merging unit that supports 61850-9-2 sample measurement values. On the other end the use of low-power instrument transformers can be connected to the merging unit which supports 61850-9-2 sample measurement values. Based on that configuration the line differential protection 87L can be executed, in a secure and stable way. We open Dixie software to configure the Cipratec 5 devices and the merging unit. First, we have a look at the merging units. In one merging unit, we have low power instrument transformer LPIT from Siemens Energy, and the second merging unit is connected to a conventional instrument transformer. I will start with the merging unit which will be connected to the LPIT. It is called L51. Please refer to the first process bus video, transformer protection application with process bus, which explains some details which I will not repeat here. In hardware and protocols, we have the view of the merging unit. Here we have the expansion module IO240 in position 3. This module permits us to bring the information from low power instrument transformer in the merging unit. I will quickly show you the configuration of the Ethernet port, for more details refer to the first webinar. Here in protocols and communication we need to select the IEC 61850-9-2 merging unit functionality. For redundant purposes, we can select the redundancy protocol which we want to use for in the communication network. We have line mode, RSTPS, PRP, and HSR. HSR and PRP are recommended for process bus networks. We need the IEEE 1588 protocol which is necessary to synchronize the process bus network. We require the sample synchronization that is done here in network. After that I go to measuring points routing. Here we have the current measuring points and voltage measuring points. In the expansion module 3, we can see the currents which are coming from the LPITS. Phase A, B and C for current as well as the voltage measuring points from the voltage divider. Voltage for phase A, B and C. Now that this information is available in the measuring points, the merging unit can transmit the information using the process bus network. Then in the merging unit routing we can assign these measuring points to be transferred using sample measured values. Here, measuring points for current and voltage can be seen coming from the LPIT. And it is possible to assign them to the process bus network. Please note that we have the stream type. In this case, IEC 61869-9 flexible streams are used, it is also available the 61850-9-2 light edition stream which allows us to be interoperable with other manufacturers. The next step is how to transmit binary information from the merging unit to the protection relay and vice versa. For that, the GOOSE application described in IEC 61850-7-2 is used. It is possible to transmit, position of the circuit breaker, position of the disconnector and so on. In this merging unit, the binary inputs are acquiring the position of the circuit breaker 1 and the position of the disconnector 1 and 2. Here in the group voltage and current, the function, external trip, is available. The external trip functionality permits to receive the signal from the protection device, to trip the circuit breaker. For the merging unit R51 which is receiving the information from the conventional current transformers you can see in hardware and protocols, the inputs for the current transformers and the inputs for the voltage transformers. In the measuring points routing, the information which is coming from the analog inputs for voltage and current is shown. And the merging unit routing allows us to transfer the information for the conventional current and voltage transformers. The way to configure the sample value stream is the same for conventional and non-conventional instrument transformers. Now, let us go to configure the client L51 which receives the information from the low power instrument transformer. In hardware and protocols, the protocols are configured. 61850-9-2 client is selected to receive the sample values from the merging unit. Also, redundancy communication can be configured as mentioned above. After that the IEEE 1588 protocol is selected. In this application there are two communication cards. 
One card for process bus to collect the information of the analog values from the conventional instrument transformer or low power instrument transformer. For line protection there is another card to achieve communication between the two substations. The protection data interface is needed, which is coming in the protection device. As you can see here, we have a protection data interface. It permits us to communicate two relays which are in two different stations. Here we can give the address of each device, for example the local device 101 or remote device 102. We have the communication that is required for the line differential application. Communication between Cypertec 5 devices that receive the information from process bus networks with Cypertec 4 devices which receive the information from conventional instrument transformer is also possible. It can be used for brownfield projects where in one end we have Cypertec 4 devices and on the other end Cypertec 5 devices via process bus. To transmit information for teleprotection schemes which is needed for distance protection with, for example, POTT, permissive overreach transfer trip, the information is assigned in communication mapping. In the function group line, the distance protection and the teleprotection schemes which are going to be used can be found. We will map the signal which we want to send. In this case, send general with priority 1. Cypertec can also receive the information in the teleprotection scheme that is enabled here. The protection interface is required for line differential protection and the teleprotection schemes, all is done with Cypertec 57SL87. The final step is to connect the sample values in the IEC 61850 station. 656S then is required to export the changes to the IEC 61850 system configurator. With the system configurator, all the communication links regarding IEC 61850 communication are done. Here there are different tabs. One tab for goose and one tab for sample measured values. On sampled measured values, there are two merging units that will publish the information MUR51 and MUL51, and two clients, R51 receives the information from conventional transformer and L51 which receives the information from low power instrument transformers. First the connection between merging unit R51 with the relay R51 that is here in the destination catalog is made. The device R51 is expanded looking for the current measuring point, and then by using drag and drop connected to the marine unit. The same is made for the voltage. Drag and drop it to the merging unit. The connection for R51 is done. The same procedure is made for the relay L51 which is on the left side. How can binary information be transferred? To link binary information the Goose menu is used. By clicking on Goose, the Goose applications are displayed. Here is the information that is sending from the relay R51 to merging unit R51. It can be seen here the external trip in voltage and current function group that is connected with the indication of the circuit breaker trip which is coming with the trip logic. The same is done for L51. Which signals are sending from the merging unit to the relay? The positions of the disconnector and circuit breaker are sent. Looking in the relay R51 and checking the disconnector when the logical node is found. Then the position is connected. The same is done for the circuit breaker. This is how the goose interconnection can be done. The network tap helps to calculate the estimated bandwidth for goose and for sample measured values. The changes are saved and now imported from the IEC 61850 system configurator. Both devices are selected and click on OK. Thank you for watching the video.